Back in 2016, Night School Studio released their debut game, Oxenfree, and it immediately stood out as one of my favorite experiences of that year. Fast forward to 2019, and here we are at the release of their second game, After Party. The demo I played at PAX made a great impression on me, and I said it was my game of the show. And now, having played it, I'm happy to report that it was a really fun time, though unfortunately I think it falls short in a few places. So, the story of After Party follows two college grads, Milo and Lola, who have recently died and gone to hell. The issue is, they really don't want to be here and they're determined to find a way out. Lucky for them, this version of hell is party central and Satan has a deal that if you can outparty him, he'll let you back into the land of the living. So the two then set out on a journey, challenging Satan's siblings one by one before finally going up to the big man himself. It's a pretty wild tale that started a bit slow but built up as it went on and became very entertaining by the end. I really like Night School's take on Hell, where the whole torture aspect is seen as like a normal 9 to 5 job and then the weekends are party hours. I also like that a lot of the usual tropes of Hell are pushed to the background and instead everyone's just so laid back and nonchalant about the whole thing because it makes for some really entertaining interactions. So like people live here? Uh, well, nobody really lives in hell. We're all just kind of part of it. It's like North Dakota. Just like in Oxenfree, After Party is a dialogue-driven game where your different decisions and responses can have different outcomes. Unlike in Oxenfree, however, you are a bit more limited in what you can say as there's usually just two choices. Now, there is this cool mechanic where if you're under the influence, a third choice will pop up. It's not exactly the most robust system ever, but I really like the idea of it and I like how different types of alcohol will give you different dialogue choices. Speaking of which, the different concoctions offered to you are fantastically creative and weird. Each has their own design, special effect, item description, and I loved going to the bar just to see what new drinks were offered. One glass filled with literally acid, if you please. This type of humor is on display throughout the rest of the game as well, with many entertaining characters, locations, and story bits. It's not really laugh out loud funny or anything, but it's certainly made for a chuckle every once in a while. That being said, not everything is fun in games in the world of After Party, because running parallel to the partying aspect is a narrative about the troubles between the lives of Lola and Milo. Upon arrival in Hell, you are assigned a personal demon, whose job is to appear at the worst possible times and remind you of all the bad or awkward things you've done in life. She serves as a way to dive into the backstories of our two characters, and show some hidden tension between them. I like the idea of this as it's a fun way to add in that backstory as well as give the characters a chance to grow past their faults. My issue is that I feel like it could have been fleshed out a bit more or maybe given more time to develop because while your personal demon is there the whole time, she's really just a minor annoyance for like the first two thirds of the game and it's pretty easy to brush off her attempts to get under your skin. It's not until closer to the end of your adventure that she actually starts to dig into some more serious stuff, but since she only visits you like once every 30 minutes, she basically dumps a lot of that on you in only two or three visits, so it feels a bit more sudden than it probably should. Not to say that the content of those visits is bad, but I wish the more serious stuff was given a bit more time to sink in before it's resolved. Now, I also want to talk about the characters, Milo and Lola, who, like I just mentioned, have some personal issues they need to deal with on their journey. I think both are decent characters, though I thought Milo may be a bit too overwritten. Personally, I could relate to a few of his character traits, which led to several moments where I felt for him. But after they kept shoving certain things in your face, I started to go from, damn I feel you, to Jesus, how inept are you? Thankfully, it never goes far enough to be that annoying, and I think by the end I was starting to warm up to him again. Same goes for his voice actor, who I thought was unfortunately kinda hit or miss for the first part of the game, but he definitely grew on me towards the end. Lola, on the other hand, had much more solid voice acting, though I couldn't help but feel that her character arc was a bit shallow. I'd even say that maybe she was a bit underwritten, as her backstory just felt more bare. But, for better or worse, both characters feel lacking when it comes to the supporting cast, because I really liked both the characters and the voice performances, particularly from Satan and Sam. For me, the supporting characters are the real standout here, and they added a lot to both the story and the world, and they were always entertaining. And when he dies 50 years from now, fat and useless, he will open his eyes and find himself here, and he will ask me the same question you are asking me now. What did I do to deserve this? The real question, Milo, is what did you do to deserve anything else? I'll be seeing you. In the end, I think the overall narrative of them outpartying Satan to escape hell is very entertaining, and I think the character stuff is okay, but should have been fleshed out a bit more. When it comes to the characters themselves, I think they're decent but certainly lacking compared to the fantastic supporting cast.
So as I talked about earlier, the majority of After Party's gameplay is based around dialogue choices and talking your way through different scenarios. And there are a lot of cool variations that you can come across, though I couldn't help but feel like it was very binary at times. Meaning that a lot of your choices come down to only one of two options, like yes or no, or left or right. But while the choices may be a bit limited, I actually really liked how impactful the outcomes were, as there were several moments that really made me question my decision afterwards, and I think that's way more important than whether or not there's only two choices. But making dialogue choices aren't all there is to After Party's gameplay, as there are several party games you can partake in. These come in the form of things like beer pong, dance offs, and cup stacking. They're all very simple mini games, but still fun and a nice addition to the game. They fit the tone really well, and I was always looking forward to them. I should also mention though that there are a few bugs, mainly in terms of the animations not starting and stopping when they should. They don't take away too much from the experience, but they're certainly noticeable. So the gameplay as a whole is a bit simple, but still really fun, and it fits the style of the game really well. Besides a few bugs, I have no real complaints. I love the look of After Party, and I think it's one of the big things that instantly gets everyone's attention. It's really cool to see such a brightly lit and colorful interpretation of Hell, and it does a good job conveying the mood they're going for. As I said previously, I also liked how the normal tropes of Hell are still there but pushed to the background, because that creates just an interesting feeling world where you know all the horrible stuff is going on, but like everyone wants to just ignore it and have a drink. It's also cool seeing the different locations of Hell, as each has their own distinct vibe. Visiting the older region is a bit more dull and lifeless, but it's a really nice contrast to the rich and vibrant nightlife of some of the other places, so it makes for a more complete feeling world. The music is also really cool, and it's a nice electronic blend with some great club bangers, as well as some nice ambient pieces to fill in the gaps of your exploration. Overall, really good stuff here. Okay, so there are certainly a fair bit of issues here, particularly on the story and character side of things, but as a whole, I think it's just a really fun experience, and I think the entertainment factor is what matters most here, and I was definitely entertained throughout the game. The art and music are great, the side characters are well constructed, and there are plenty of really fun and interesting moments that happen throughout the 6 hour runtime. So I'd say, despite its shortcomings, After Party is a really good time that I would recommend to those who are interested. Thanks for watching guys, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and check out my other reviews. Stay tuned for an official announcement of my upcoming game, and I'll see y'all in the next video.